We now move to the phylum Mollusca and mollusks are really known for their shells and for their hard parts. These are California mussels, Middleus edgeless or Middleus californius. And mussels attach themselves to rock with a string called bissel threads. And that string, that thread that attaches mussels to rocks is one of the strongest substances on earth. Barnacles and mussels, even though they're in two different phyla, produce some of the most amazing and strong glues that we're just beginning to figure out how to produce. So we have a lot to learn from these animals. Those bissel threads in these mussels keep them attached to the rocks as waves crash over these organisms and they can slightly open their openings here and let seawater filter through and ca capture the plankton. These are members of bivalvia, the class, the class bivalvia, the phylum mollusca. Relatives in the same phylum but a different class are the kelp snails. These are gastropods. Gastropod means eat with your foot. And so snails that wander around the rocks or maybe even in your aquarium are essentially scraping off bits of algae and bacteria with a little uh, instrument called a radula and eating it and essentially using their feet to gather food. All seashells are members of the class Gastropoda, again phylum mollusca. Here's a seashell we found in Baja, a cone shell. Of course the squid is also a member of the phylum mollusca. In this case it's a member of the class Cephalopoda. What's missing in a squid that you find in a bivalve? The shell, right? As it turns out in squids there's a hard internal shell that runs down the length of the organism and it's this hard internal shell that gives the squid its rigidity that gives this particular squid its torpedo shape that allows it to swim very rapidly. This is a picture of a jumbo squid, what we call a, a Humboldt squid, and it washed up on Crystal Cove State Beach a couple years ago, maybe this was three years back now, when we had a big invasion of these squids in Southern California. We don't know why they show up on our coast in such incredible numbers, but it seems in recent years jumbo squid have been moving further and further north in the Pacific Ocean. It's possibly to, to climate change, possibly due to some other kind of change in ocean conditions that allows these organisms to exploit habitats that they weren't able to previously. This is about, oh, I would say three or four feet in length and quite a voracious critter. You don't want to get uh, caught in the water with one of these guys. They're very powerful swimmers and tucked in here uh, inside these ten tentacles, actually eight tentacles and or eight arms and two tentacles is a, a parrot-like beak that can crush your arm. Here's a cuttlefish. This is a picture of a cuttlefish from Monterey Bay Aquarium. Again, it's a cephalopod, which means head and foot, made up of head and foot, and it's a member of the phylum mollusca. And one of the fascinating things about cuttlefish are some studies that have been done down in Texas to measure their intelligence. It turns out that cuttlefish may use a form of gang signs and there's a really great video if you could watch it it's called incredible suckers and they show cuttlefish watching television honest to god watching television and when one signals like this the other signals back so some people think that cuttlefish may be as smart as your average dog and well dogs aren't always that smart but that's pretty smart for an invertebrate an animal without a backbone and so cuttlefish, like squid and like octopus, are known to be extremely intelligent and able to figure things out, such as the amazing diversity of life on Earth. Here's the octopus, and we all know that octopus are very smart. And octopus, unlike squid, they completely lack a shell. But they have uh, the beak, they have the radula, they have other features in common with the rest of the mollusks, including the bivalves and the gastropods. So they still belong to the phylum mollusca. They're still part of the class Cephalopoda, and they're really, truly an amazingly beautiful organism if you can get past the fact that they don't have a backbone and that they kind of slither, but they're amazingly beautiful creatures.